Welcome back to the channel and this week I thought I'd just go through the progress that I've made with the Lion Cup so far as well as some of the questions that I've been asked through the years. Now one thing I'm quite regularly asked is about what paper I use and originally when I started I used to use Fabriano Artistico but unfortunately that paper changed a few years ago and it's not as good as it used to be. So nowadays I use St Cuthbert Saunders Waterford or like the picture I'm working on at the moment, that's done on Archie's Acrowell. Now there are a few things I need to do when choosing a paper. For example, it needs to be able to take the dark tone well, and also as well because of the indenting technique that I use, it also needs to be relatively tough. I'll always try to work around about a 300 gram paper, and I'll always choose a, an off-white. I never go for a pure white, because I feel the off-white just gives a slightly softer look. Although the arches and St Cuthbert's are very similar in how they look and also how they feel, they do have a slight difference. The arches I would say is slightly tougher, but the downside of that is it's a little bit harder to work for the indenting technique. Now the St Cuthbert's is relatively easy to indent. So if you're looking to try this and you've never done it before, probably the St Cuthbert's is the one to go for. Also as well, both papers are hot pressed because you want a relatively smooth surface to do this as basically you're the one applying the texture to the paper. Now the pencils that I use are Caran Dash Graphwoods and I've used these since they, I think they first came out when I was given one to try. Now before that I used Derwent but I've got to say, after using the Caran Dash, they're just much smoother to use. But the fact of the matter is, all artists are different. You have to decide what works for you. Now, in terms of the grading system on pencils, don't automatically assume that an H in one is going to be the same as another. They do all vary considerably. Another thing I get asked about quite a lot is graphite shine. Now, this personally is not something that really bothers me because when you light the picture correctly when it's finished, you don't really have too much of an issue with it. And what actually happens is, the reason why it shines is because graphite is a crystal. And as the light hits it, it can reflect back. So if you put a light directly at it, it can just act like a mirror and just reflect the light back at you. You can diminish this a little bit by basically building the tone up in layers but I would say it does diminish it a little bit and that's about all, it doesn't totally get rid of it. I have got some of the Faber Castle graphite matte pencils to try out and hopefully I'll get that video out this week. Now I have heard people have told me some people like them, some don't like them, so I haven't tried them yet so as soon as I do I'll do a video and um, I'll give my opinion what I think. Another thing I get asked is about the indentation tool I use. Now originally when I first started I would use either a 9H pencil or for thicker hairs I would use a basically it was a screwdriver which I got in a Christmas cracker and then modified. But what I use now is a, a, a dart and basically with darts and I've, I use a couple of these uh, all I've done is reshape the tips uh, and because they're a bit too sharp to start with and then from there you've got a very substantial tool you can buy embossing tools but I find they're a little bit flimsy they can bend they also have a bobble on the end which can break off and I've actually seen somebody cut a piece of paper for one before when this has happened so personally speaking the darts great not my idea somebody when I was doing a class once one of the students said to me would a dart work um, so I thought that sounds a good idea so we tried it and it worked. Another thing I use for indenting is a 9H pencil. Now I use a Cretacolor for this, I don't use a Caran Dash because Caran Dash only make up to a 4H. A 9H is ideal because with a 9H pencil it can be incredibly sharp and it can also leave a very faint mark behind. So it actually makes it easy to see. For example, when I'm doing whiskers, I can actually see what it is that I'm drawing. So it is, it's got an advantage over something like the dart for this. I have actually just started a new one. Uh, the original one I had is about 20 years old. It's been dropped on the floor. 
the paints all come off of it and I've, I've just started another one just because I've got another one here. Now to sharpen them they are quite tricky and this leads on to the, the next thing really and that's about sharpening pencils. Um, I've been asked about what do you use to sharpen them and the fact is I just use a normal pencil sharpener. I don't use anything special. I found that pencil sharpeners, they tend to basically last for about a week and then they just deteriorate. So I just use a normal pencil sharpener. And then if I need to, I'll just finish the tip with a small file. Uh, and again, 9H pencil, that's really the only way that you can really get a sharp point on it. So the next thing, and probably one of the most controversial people debate about is fixative on pictures. Uh, when you finish it, what do you do? And the answer is simple. Uh, when it's finished, it's sealed in a plastic bag. It goes off and it gets framed. And once it's behind glass, it's protected. Uh, I don't use fixative. Uh, when I first started, I tried fixative and I hated it. It changed the color of the picture. Um, and again, you, you use a, a paper, which is acid free, pH neutral. Um, and then you spray a chemical on it. So I've personally, some people use it, I don't, um, and I just prefer to frame the picture up and then I know it's totally protected. Now, if uh, say for example, I'm working at a show, probably the most common question I'll get asked is, how long does it take to do a picture? And the answer to that is difficult because they all vary from one to the other. Now, the picture behind me, the lion cub, that's gone along quite nicely until about a week ago when it hit the point where it just slows down. And putting things like the whiskers in and constantly building fur texture, that all takes an immense amount of time. Doing things like the eyes and the nose and stuff like that, that progresses re relatively well. But uh, as soon as you get to like expanses of fur texture, or like I said, the whiskers, they just take forever. So a picture like that will say take anywhere between say three to four months to complete. It is quite a large picture. Um, it's actually quite a bit further back from me than, than where I'm actually sat. So it, it may look a little bit smaller on screen, but it's actually quite a large picture. Now from working at shows, uh, because of the amount of space that you take up on a stand, uh, I got used to working quite upright and quite often people would say how can you work upright when doing a, a pencil drawing and I've got to be honest and say I actually quite like it, I feel quite comfortable doing it and like with the easel behind me I can just step back from it, look at it from a distance and decide to make any alterations or changes to it. Uh, sometimes I work flat, uh, I don't generally work on an angle, I'll either work say uh, either flat or on the easel, uh, particularly with larger pictures, I tend to work on the easel more than anything else. I also get asked that why is it when I work in black and white that I choose to work from a colour photograph? And the reason for this is because I personally feel I can see more detail in the colour image than I can in a black and white one. Now the photograph that I'm working from has been zoomed into quite a lot also been cropped. It did originally contain the mother and the cub's brother as well. But I just wanted to focus in on the expression on the cub's face and particularly onto the eyes. The photograph is quite grainy and I did have to bring up the exposure on the eyes. But I'm really happy with how the composition looks. For the past couple of weeks I've mainly been working on fur texture. And I don't tend to work solely in one area. I'll work over the whole picture, adding a bit here and a bit there, until eventually the whole picture's built up. And then after that, I can then start to, to look at building more strength into the shadow areas and so on, when I can look at the, the whole picture as one. The other thing I've been doing is working on the whiskers, and I've been starting to apply those. To draw the whiskers in, I first use a blunt H pencil and very lightly sketch them in in the position that I want. Each whisker is made up of two lines, and then the visible part is the bit in between. Now to do this I use a 9H pencil because 
I want to indent the lines into the paper and the 9H will actually leave a faint visible mark. The first line is relatively straightforward but the second one is quite tricky because it has to run parallel but it needs to converge at the tip. So to make it easier what I do is I use a light and this basically shone across the paper casts a shadow into the indentation from the first line and it makes it much easier to then draw the second one in. A kneadable eraser is then used to clean the lines up a little bit and for anything more extensive I can then use the electric eraser. It's then just a case of continuing this and then very very slowly the picture will build up. I can also use a sharp F pencil for just finer details just to, just to get that a little bit neater along the edge. It's then just a very careful job to then start to apply more fur texture between the whiskers and also apply tone over the top. So a little bit of a different video that one. Um, if you have got any questions then please ask them. It's nice to get questions. It's it, it really is nice to have the interest in, in my work. So please feel free to ask questions. Uh, also as well, if you have found this interesting, then please do like the video uh, and subscribe if you want to. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.